Hi, third graders. Thanks for tuning in to music class this week. We are on our last um, lesson on classical music, and next week we'll start the romantic period. Um, but let's review what you've learned about classical music. So here we go. Oh, let's sing one of your favorite songs ever. Mozart, Beethoven, two composers of classical tunes, balanced phrases, beautiful melodies, rich chords to accompany them. Balanced phrases, beautiful melodies, the classical period. Pianos were a new thing, orchestras were bigger, rich chords to accompany them. 1750 to 1820, the classical period. Such a good song. All right, we're gonna learn a little bit about Mozart. Remember, Mozart is one of the composers from the classical period. He is the one who was the child genius. Oh no, did I press the wrong button? No, I'm good. Okay, it's just, there we go. Fox brain. a special talent. Do you have a talent for doing just one thing, like, or skipping underwater? Well, that's what Mozart discovered. He found he just loved music, and he had an amazing talent for it. But what he also discovered is when he listened to it, he could remember it, note by note. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart lived from 1756 to 1791, and Mozart was a child prodigy. He was brilliant on the keyboard, and his dad took him on tours around Europe, showing him off. Look, here he is. Isn't it wonderful? Anyway, one day during these adventures, he made a pit stop at the Sistine Chapel in Rome. There, he heard a piece of music called Miserere by a guy called Allegri. Now, this piece was no ordinary piece of music, no. This piece was amazingly sacred and was a very special piece of music. Actually, it was so special that the Pope said, no one should ever, 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 ever write it down as this piece of music, ever. Well, Mozart did know about the Pope's warning. One day, he and his dad wandered into the Sistine Chapel, sat down and listened to Allegri's Miserere. Mozart was mesmerized. I am mesmerized. Allegri's Miserere had two choirs and nine separate parts. Listen to this. He remembered each part like it was actually being written on paper in his brain. He remembered part one. He remembered part two. He remembered part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven, part eight, part nine. Yes, he remembered every part. Amazing, really, being able to separate out each individual line of music. Then, not knowing the Pope's no writing rule, he sat down and wrote out what had been recorded in his brain. Well, after he wrote it, somehow the piece was taken from him and copied for everyone to see. And eventually, it got back to Rome, where the Pope found out. Um, remember that piece of music that you said should never be written down? Well, it kind of, sort of, maybe, possibly, kind of was, well, written down. The Pope immediately called for Mozart. Bring that boy here! When Mozart arrived, rather than the Pope being angry, he treated Mozart like a hero and showered him with praise. The Pope said, you are amazing, a genius, a musical master, a clever kid. Now listen, 
you've got special talents as well. And the best way to get good at something is to practice. Practice, practice, just like Mozart. Whether it's teeth brushing, dancing, singing, or even drawing squares. So next time you're practicing your talent, remember Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Always make the most of your talents. Especially while you're home during break, you have lots of time to work on your talents. Okay, let's go to the quiz. Woo woo. Okay, guys, time for the quiz. Ready? First question. Finish this sentence. Mozart was a child prodigy on the French horn, keyboard, trumpet, or chainsaw. Which one? Which one was Mozart a prodigy on? Mm. The trumpet? The chainsaw? How about the keyboard? Yes. You're a prodigy! Aw, uh, yeah. <laughs> what famous chapel did Mozart and his father visit while in Rome? The Sistine Chapel, the Sister Chapel, the Silly Chapel, or the Cistern Chapel. Do you remember? Which one is in Rome? Yeah, the Cistine Chapel. Boom chicka boom. How many different parts were there in the piece Mozart remembered? Seven? Eight? Nine? Or ten. Do you remember? Nine. Boom chicka boom. Aw, oh, yeah. What famous piece by leg did Mozart and his father hear at the Sistine Chapel? Solomary, Happy Airy, Mr. Airy, or miserary. It was miserere. Boom chicka boom. Aw, yeah. The Pope said the piece was so sacred, he declared it could not be what? It could not be written down, copied, and passed out. It could not be performed. It could not be sung outside the chapel or it could not be sung on the playground. Do you remember? Yeah, he said it was so sacred it could not be written down, copied, and passed out. And then Mozart just wrote it down after he listened Great to it. Great job! Congratulations, look at you, you finished the quiz. Now Ooh. it's time for a party. We're having a party, I love a party. Very nice, all right, let's move on. So, we learned about Mozart, one of the composers from the classical period. Now, let's review orchestras. Do you remember we've talked about how the Baroque orchestra had the um, harpsichord as the leader? And then in the classical period, the conductor faced the audience. So, here's what the Baroque orchestra looked like. Remember in the middle, here's the harpsichord, just a few woodwinds, one brass instrument, very small, right? Okay, that's enough. The classical period, what do you notice changed? More woodwinds, more brass, not just one trumpet, but more. A few percussion instruments, and the conductor. Yeah. I wonder what it does if we click on it. Oh, you can listen to them. Cool. Let's listen to the whole thing. Okay, and 
the next period we'll talk about is the romantic. <gasps> Whoa, we went from this to this. We have the piano, we have a harp, way more percussion instruments, way more brass instruments. Let's just listen really quick to the romantic period orchestra. Oh, you guys, I love the romantic period. Can't wait to talk about it next week, but let's move on for now. Okay, let's take a little listening listening quiz. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to play some music, and you need to figure out which period it is from. Let's start with red. Is it fancy? Are there lots of ornaments? Or is it perfection? The classical period, totally balanced, yeah. How about the green one? Do you hear ornamentation? Is it fancy or is it balanced? Mmm, the classical again. Okay, how about yellow? I hear a harpsichord. Is it balanced? No, it's fancy. All right, last one. Oh, I hear a harpsichord. Do you hear it? That's right, the Baroque period, totally. All right, how'd you do? Could you figure out what period it was? I feel like I was pretty good at it, but then I'm the music teacher. Okay, this you can explore a lot on your own if you want. I'm not gonna go through all of it, um, but let's play a song together. Ooh, this is nice. Play some music note before you could read or even play your song for a king. I bet you haven't, but that's okay. I know a little guy that could. It's okay, you're not Mozart, the master of melodies, operas, arias, sonatas, stacks of songs and symphonies. Here's the thing. He practiced hard when he was young It wasn't just hard work for Wolfgang He still liked to have some fun He composed over 600 tunes What a lot of work to get done It's okay, you're not Mozart He wrote 23 string quartets Duets, quintets, motets he was the master of minuets. Boo ba da, let's give it up for Mozart. He wrote a lot of songs you can't sing. Let's give it up for old Mozart, the famous child prodigy. Mmm, such a good song. I love that song because it's catchy and also like 
next time my mom says, like, why don't you get better on that test? I can just say, it's okay, I'm not Mozart. Or when my sister is like, oh, I lost this game that we're playing. And you're like, it's okay, you're not Mozart. Because <clears throat> Mozart was good at everything by the time he was eight years old. And I am not, nor is my sister. So I'll just say, it's okay, you're not Mozart. Anyways, you can listen to that more. So we have fun facts about Mozart. Let's see. I wrote a piece called Eine Kleine Nachtmusik, which means a little night music. I love that song. Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. Da, 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 da. If you listen to my music for eight hours a day, every day, it will take over 30 days to listen to it all. That's like a lot of time. 30 days? I wrote my first symphony when I was only eight years old. Because you're Mozart. Ha 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 ha. I lived during the classical period. Okay, so where did he live? You know where Europe is. Ba ba. Where's Austria? Well, do you know? You can do this on your own. But if you can't find it, I'll give you a hint. It's right here. It has a little tail. It's right by Germany, above Italy. Here. That one. Unless I'm wrong. Nope, I'm right. Aw, yeah, Miss Rebecca knows her geography. Woo, woo. Okay, where is Salzburg? I like Salzburg because one of my favorite movies is The Sound of Music. And Salzburg is where they filmed it. I think it is here. Yes! Oh, Miss Rebecca, good job. Okay. You learn about Salzburg. Okay, about his life. You can go through this on your own and learn all that there is to know about Mozart. Um, you can do listening to his stuff, his music. There's a play activity that wants you to like play with the boomwhackers. And I'm sorry that we're not at school. We don't have any boomwhackers. But if you want to, if you have like a piano or something at home, or you could even just tap the beat with it. Anyways, then there's a quiz. If you go through all the facts, you can take the composer quiz and see how much you can learn about Mozart. All right, let's do a quick assessment. This is not the fun game. This is just the assessment. Um, Let's see how you do. Let's see how you do. Which of the words below is not a characteristic of the classical period? Order, balance, fancy. Oh, this is so easy. You guys totally know the answer. Because you're the smartest third graders ever, but it's okay, you're not Mozart. Which composer below was not part of the classical period? Beethoven, Bach. Mozart. Well, we, we talked about Mozart today, so we know he is. Did you do the other lessons? If you did, you know that Beethoven is part of the classical. So Bach, we learned about him. He was very fancy. He is from the Baroque period. Okay, Cristofori. Last week, you should have learned about Cristofori. He invented something really important which could play both soft and loud sounds. Do you remember? What did Cristofori invent? Yeah, the pianoforte, which also means soft and loud. So the question kind of gives it away there. Remember, soft in music is piano and loud is forte. So pianoforte, soft and loud. Cristofori invented the pianoforte, or like we call it today, the piano. Okay, which of the following is true about the classical period? A, music was fancy. Orchestra had no conductor. No, music is not fancy. Featured the string quartet. The orchestra was larger. Maybe, maybe. We talked about the orchestra today and it was bigger than the Baroque. Harpsichord was popular. Songs were complicated. Ooh, no, no, no. That's Baroque. So this one has to be the right answer. Yes! 
Even as a child, Mozart was a musical genius, actor, chef. I want to I want the answer to be C really bad. Mozart was a musical chef. What's a chef? Someone who cooks food. You know the answer, right? We watched the video today. It's genius. Can I just say, like, what would a musical chef be? Someone who cooks up music? Uses music in recipes. If you're having a bad day, I could give you a list of songs to make you feel better. <gasps> dream job. That's totally my dream job. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what else we have. Oh, that's the end of the quiz. We did it. Good job. Okay. Want to be another detective? Bum, bum, bum. What style is the music? Let's start with blue. What? I have no idea. Okay, I have a few guesses because I'm the music teacher, but this is not Baroque. This is not classical. Cajun! Oh! Have you been to Quaver Street with on the Metro? You could go listen to some Cajun music on the Metro. Cool. Okay, let's keep going. Green. This is not Baroque, and it's not Cajun. I bet it's classical. Yes! Oh, Miss Rebecca, good job. Yellow. This is not Cajun. It's not classical. It's not Baroque. What is it? Rock music, oh duh. Come on, Miss Rebecca. Let's do red. Is it broke? Or classical? Baroque, oh! Oh, there's the harpsichord. Okay, it's fancy. I was too quick to say classical. All right, purple, light purple. Classical. Yes, good job, Miss Rebecca. Dark purple. What? That's not Baroque. Does that sound balanced? No. What is it? If it's not classical or Baroque. Oh, it's modernism. Modern music. And this sounds like a scary movie. Oh, that's enough. That was fun. Okay, this is um, going to be Miss Rebecca versus Miss Rebecca, and you know who's going to win? Miss Rebecca. But if you would rather not see all the answers, you can go to Quaver and play against your mom or your dad or your brother or sister, or you can play against yourself and quiz yourself. But if you want to watch me quiz myself, you can. Um, the last page of this just wants to make sure that we learned these things. So, in the last three weeks, have you been able to identify Mozart, Beethoven, and Haydn? If you don't recognize Haydn or Beethoven, you should go back to the other lessons I assigned and learn about them because they're really cool composers. And do you know that the classical orchestra is larger than the Baroque orchestra? We talked about it in a slide earlier today, but those are the two big things I want you to know before you move to romantic music next week. So if you're like, what? Maybe you should go back and do some more work. Okay. 
quiz time. Bum ba da dum, bum ba da dum. Miss Rebecca's going to win because she's competing against herself. Okay, we have definitions, classical music, classical composers, and the classical episode that we watched so long ago. Um, red team is up first. They're going for big points. They're gonna do definitions for 40. What is the name of the keyboard that came before the piano was invented? Cristofori. He invented the pianoforte, and it took the place of the Baroque instrument, the harpsichord. Yes! Good job, red team. Good job. Remember, harpsichord, so important in Baroque music. All right, purple team, she's gonna go for points too. Classical episode. What did Gwenda do to change the Baroque cake into a classical cake? She added another layer with more decorations. No. She changed the icing to a different color. No. She removed the ornaments to simplify the cake. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, nailed it, purple team. All right, red team. He still wants points. He knows how to win this game. Classical music. Listen, is this a piece from the classical period? Yes, the phrases are balanced and simple. No, the phrases are really fancy. Ooh, gut reaction. Mmm, yes, red team. Good job. All right, purple team. She's going to go for classical composers. All of the great classical composers lived on which continent? Oh, you know this one. You have to. This is Europe. You know that. Okay, red team, red team. He's going to go for classical episode. True or false, the orchestra became larger during the classical period. Yes, true. Okay, purple turn. What's she gonna do? She's gonna go to definitions. What do we call the pianoforte today? Harpsichord, clavichord, piano, piano. Oh yeah. Red team. He's going to go for classical composers. Which classical composer is known as the father of a symphony? Do you know? I bet you don't. Cuz everyone gets it wrong. But the answer is Haydn. Okay. Purple, here we go. Listen, is this music from the classical period? Yes, the phrases are balanced and simple. No, the phrases are really fancy. I hear harpsichord. I'm gonna go with no. Yes. It was fancy. Okay, red team over oh, tied. Red team, he's gonna go here. What do we call a music group that has two violins, one viola, and one cello? Last week you should have learned this. Brass, no. Woodwind. Flutes, no. Strings, yes. Okay. She gon' do classical episode. How can we describe melodies written during the classical period? Are they long and complicated? Are they pleasing to the ear or difficult to sing? The melodies were pleasing to the ear. They were not overly fancy. They were not super call or complicated and long. They were, they were sweet. They were peaceful. They were simple, pleasing to the ear. Yeah. Red team, red team. He's going to do classical music. It's 
Same question as last time. Fancy? Simple. I think simple. Nailed it. Okay. Purple team. Yeah, she wants to tie it up. Which classical composer gradually lost his hearing, but was able to continue writing music? Haydn, Mozart, or Beethoven? Yeah, Beethoven is right. He's the one that went deaf, which means he couldn't hear anymore. He's also Miss Rebecca's favorite classical composer, so there's that. Okay, red team. We left the easy questions for last. Why don't you do classical composers? Which com classical composer was a child prodigy who performed for kings and queens all over Europe? Haydn, Mozart, or Beethoven? It's okay, you're not Mozart. We learned this today, for sure. It's okay, you're not Mozart. The child prodigy. All right, purple team, what do you got? Classical music, okay, I hear you. String quartets became popular during the classical period. Who was the father of the string quartet? The same guy who was the father of the, the other one. He's the father of both. I forgot what the other question was, but it's Haydn. All right, red team, don't get it wrong, don't get it wrong. Definitions. What do we call the period of music that emphasized balance, simplicity, and order? I wonder, what are we learning about? Maybe the classical period? Yes, good job. All right, 200 points, come on, purple. In classical period music, nearly all of the phrases have the same what? Dynamic, how loud or soft they are. Tempo, which is the speed, or length. Length. <gasps> yes! And that is how you win playing against yourself. And I won, and I feel great about myself. And if you want to win against yourself too, feel free. I hope you had fun reviewing classical music with me. Beethoven, Haydn, Mozart. Those are the three biggies. The orchestra got bigger. The music was more simple, less complex, less fancy, balanced, pleasing to the ear, great melodies. Classical music, it's famous for a reason. Next week, we're going to learn about the Romantic period, and we're going to spend three lessons learning about the next time period. So look forward to that. I hope that you are well. I hope that you've been singing and dancing, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for coming to music class.